This afternoon we're going to be talking about leg anatomy, basic leg anatomy, and some of the common injuries that happen in that area. So starting from the horse's knee, which we commonly call it, it's also really properly called the carpus in Latin. And so that's analogous to the human wrist. The metacarpal bones, the biggest one is the cannon bone, metacarpal two, which has evolved in the horse to be very strong and long in order to accommodate the horse's speed and size. The splint bones on either side of the central metacarpal bone are metacarpal two and four, and they're very small and vestigial. So they don't have a lot of function except to support some of the bones in the knee. It's important to know that as a horse is getting conditioned, that the bones in the horse's leg are accommodating that stress of exercise and remodeling themselves to keep themselves from getting injured. So gradual increases in exercise and practicing on, con on consistent surfaces is very important to prevent bone injuries. The horse's tendons, which come both on the back of the leg, which are the digital flexor tendons, both superficial and deep, connect up to the muscles in the shoulder and the elbow. A tendon is attachment between a muscle and a bone. So these tendons can get injured in overuse or fatigue situations. The extensor tendon is rarely injured in polo unless it is hit or has some kind of a traumatic experience. The suspensory ligaments, now remember a ligament is going from a bone to a bone, are these cords that you can feel in front of the tendon and behind the cannon. So right sort of in the middle of the leg on both sides, medial inside and lateral outside. And they're attaching down to the sesamoid bone here. These ligaments are often injured in some kind of a traumatic way if a horse twists its ankle, so to speak, a little bit like we might do that. The joints of the horse's lower limb are the fetlock joint, the pastern, and the coffin joint. The fetlock joint is the most commonly stressed in polo um, as it sees a lot of extension in the sport. <clears throat> and if it does have pathology in it, you may see a little bubble of fluid, of effusion, in this pocket right here, between this, where the suspensory comes down and the cannon bone. If the effusion is farther behind, like between the suspensory and the tendon, then that is effusion in the tendon sheath often and um, can be palpated at the back of the leg. And that can be associated with some kind of tendonitis. tendonitis. There are a lot of issues in the horse's hoof, which are too complicated to go into, but suffice it to say that good farriery will go a long way towards keeping your horse's feet healthy and sound, and as well as being aware of the kinds of surfaces you may exercise your horse on. Um, trying to avoid really hard surfaces um, can be helpful.
I'm Dr. Shelley Onderdonk with the USPA Certified Polo Instructor Program. Thanks for tuning in. Play safe, play smart, play polo.